the speaker's face. All right, uh, we'll start off uh, with this International Conference for Exchange of Idea. So as uh, the agenda, uh, well, for, for the opening, it seems that this, this pandemic or COVID-19 actually is SARS COVID uh, virus 2, okay? Uh, that caused the pandemic throughout the whole world. So, uh, well, first of all, I would like to uh, call upon uh, Dr. Kuroki Shinichi, who is the Deputy Director of China Research and Sakura Science Center, uh, Japan's Science and Technology Agency. Okay, uh, Dr. Kuroki, can you just give us your uh, welcoming address for, for this webinar? Okay. Thank you very much, Yui Sensei. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Then, uh, thank you very much again, uh, Professor Wee Sensei uh, uh, of Azabu University for giving me the chance for opening remarks. I'm Shinichi Kuroki, Director of the Department of Sakura Science, Japan Science and Technology Agency, which we call JST in short. JST is the organizer and sponsor of Sakura Science plan and one of the host institutions of today's webinar. Uh, it is my great honor to give opening remarks for this webinar. First of all, I'd like to express my uh, deep appreciation to all the participants of Sakura Science Club members, viewers, and the people concerned who are participating in this webinar. Nowadays, human societies all over the world are facing the deep chaos by the pandemic of novel coronavirus infections. Globally, 18 million cases and 619,000 deaths by COVID-19 infections have been reported until now. Concerning the activity of Sakura Science Plan, we have not been able to invite even a single person to Japan because of the strict immigration control since April. We cannot also foresee when we can resume the invitation by Sakura Science Plan. Under such uh, difficult circumstances, it is very much important for us all to hold today's webinar on the theme, new normal in various countries. This issue is the most urgent the challenge for all the people in the world. I believe the outcome of the today's webinar will be very much useful, not only for us all, but also uh, for the universities and regional societies we belong to, as well as the government of each country by a proactive dissemination of the related information. And today's webinar will surely show us the direction as to how to Sakura Science Club should act and respond in the future. I'd like to introduce the background as to how today's webinar is realized. At the beginning of this April, we JST asked Professor Wiesensei to obtain reports on the latest situation of and the lesson learned from COVID-19 infection from the Sakura Science Club members in the various parts of the world who were invited to Azab University by Professor Wiesensei in the past. So far, we have obtained and posted 41 useful reports 
from 24 countries on our website. JST has shared such reports with other Sakura Science Club members around the globe on the Sakura Science Plan website. And our website received a higher reputation from within Japan and overseas. Such activities on our website in cooperation with Professor Wee Sensei have developed into today's webinar. Today, I really hope to have your active participation and information exchange and making this webinar more and more fruitful. Thank you very much for all the participants and uh, I'd like to return the microphone to Professor Wee Sensei. Thank you. Okay, uh, Dr. Kura Kuroki, thank you for this uh, warm greetings and, uh, and insightful uh, speech. So next, I would like to share these uh, slides. How, how do I do it? Let me see. This is Kamen Kyoyo. And uh, huh? let me see, how, how, how do I do it? I think it's, it's like this, is it? No. Uh, oh, okay. Hmm? Okay, so uh, we see this uh, these slides, and it shows the, it is the poster for this uh, webinar. Here we have this uh, international conference on sharing of new ideas, and it is oh, okay, sorry, uh, I think uh, laser, okay. And this is the new normal. So we ha have to learn the defenses against COVID-19. And uh, COVID-19 will not go away. So how are we going to live together with it? So uh, for these webinars, after this greeting uh, by Dr. Kuroki, I'll just have, uh, we are now at this introduction. Then we'll have a presentation from uh, speakers from Indonesia, who is uh, Dr. Uh, Tohawi. He is a lecturer at uh, Ayalanga University. Uh, I think he's in the Department of Public Health. So he's teaching public health. And then uh, we have uh, next, after Indonesia, we have India from uh, uh, Maharashtra Animal and Fisheries University, which is near to Mumbai, okay, on the western part of India. And we have Dr. Vital, who is uh, assistant professor in the Department of Pathology, I think. And then uh, after India, we have Kazakhstan. Uh, we have Dr. Laura Auerberg-Kerova from Kazakh's National Agrarian University. She is in Almaty, okay? Uh, the, I think the, 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 the previous capital of uh, Kazakhstan. And then after Kazakhstan, we have uh, Dr. Adnan, who is uh, also assistant professor at the University of Veterinary and Animal Science. Okay. And uh, well, after Pakistan, we have uh, Dr. Sirinun Pisamai from Chulalongkong University, Bangkok. And I think she is uh, in the Department of Surgery and uh, she does operation. And, Next, uh, we have uh, Dr. Liu, uh, Dr. Liu Xianyong, who is uh, an associate professor at the China Agricultural University uh, in the Department of uh, Veterinary Science. Okay, uh, he specializes in molecular biology and uh, parasitology. All right, and then after that, we have a closing remark. So, uh, when all the speakers are speaking, I would uh, like you to speak a little bit louder or just go to your I mean to your mic make your mic a little bit louder so we can hear you properly and uh, wait, let me see next uh, we have uh, this is the, the agenda for today so to give you a brief idea of uh, the infected cases as of today and if you just type this worldometer you can get the the infected cases of COVID-19 in the whole world, okay? Now the whole world, we have a population of uh, 7.8 billion, okay? 7,800 million. And uh, the worldwide uh, cases up to, up to now, you see, from 
I think from January up to now, is uh, 18 million. And China reported, uh, well, the Chinese government reported 84,000, and India now we have 1.9 million, Indonesia this much. I'm, I'm not going to read all this, you just look at the, the figures, okay? And Japan, we are having this about uh, 900, 800 to 1,000 patients for the last uh, uh, for the last week, and every day we are getting about uh, 800 patients, 900 patients, 1,000 patients, and up to now the death uh, rate is is like this, and this why is is today? This was yesterday, okay, on Worldometer. I would just like to bring uh, to your attention that uh, the countries that are represented here today uh, in terms of population of course we have china india which is number one and number two and indonesia is the has the third largest world population followed by pakistan so out of the top five we have four okay uh representative and then japan and thailand is number 20th and kazakhstan is uh, number 64 in population but kazakhstan has the largest land area. It is the number ninth uh, largest land area in the world. Uh, in Asia is is after uh, after Russia, China, India, and then we have Kazakhstan. Okay. Uh, well, for your information, the largest uh, country or with the largest land mass in Asia is Russia because the the Russian uh, Asian part okay is larger than China. All right. So uh, we'll move on. To and uh, oh, sorry, uh, then what do I do? I do uh, what? So I I go back and then okay. So uh, I would like to call upon Doctor Tohawe to uh, give your presentation. And remember, we do not have much time. Uh, maybe you can just have uh, maybe five to 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 seven or eight minutes. Okay, uh, Doctor Tohawe. Wait, let me see how how do I I I, I go to this. Okay, thank you, Sensei. Uh, yes, um, my presentation is work in uh, your screen. Yeah, okay, now I Okay, can thank see. you. Okay, thank you, Sensei. Uh, thanks for uh, Oi Sensei and GST Japan Science and Technology uh, Sakura Science uh, Committee to invite me in this uh, great webinar. Uh, today, I will present about the, I will share you about the little information uh, current COVID situation uh, and health protocol by Ministry of Health and also Indonesian Innovation. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Indonesia has the numbers uh, hike with positive confirmed with COVID-19. Uh, Indonesian uh, in the first number in Southeast Asia. Current status or present case in Indonesia, we have uh, the numbers with the positive case still increase. You can see with this uh, blue uh, figure, but uh, we also have the increase in uh, recovered people. You can see with this uh, green uh, trend, but uh, this uh, number, we have a new uh, epicentrum in East Java. Uh, we know that uh, East Java uh, become uh, is red zone until now, higher than uh, capital city, Jakarta, and in particular in Surabaya and Gresik. In other hand, uh, we have a big problem with the public participation. And also, we have uh, the second enemy, except COVID, is hook information. Some of people uh, claim that uh, COVID-19 is, uh, uh, is harmless. Uh, and some of people also claim about he was uh, found the new uh, COVID uh, antibiotic or the others without the academic confirm confirmation. So the hoax information and lower participation by our citizen 
is uh, have a big problem in our countries. And then uh, this is the health protocol in Indonesia stood by Ministry of Health, Republic of Indonesia. This is the physical distancing uh, documentation from traditional market in Salatiga, central of Java. And then the restriction people in public facilities, uh, such as in uh, public transportation, uh, in and also in other uh, in public uh, facilities, we must use a mask and face shield. You can see that this protocol is state by Ministry of Health. So all the people in our countries, uh, if he must uh, join activity in outdoor, they must use mask and face shield and also uh, washing their hands to prevent COVID Uh, this is the thermal gun examination. Uh, you can see the this protocol will be provided in a uh, supermarket, in uh, public transportation, and the others. Uh, this is the condition in our school or our college still closed until this situation we don't know that when the situation will be better, but uh, the limit communication meeting or uh, lecture using online webinar using Zoom uh, platform still used by uh, our institution and education in Indonesia. And then the next is ethic when cowging or sneezing people must uh, close the mouth and nose. So it's prevent COVID to spread to the others. And each citizen must provide room ventilation and self-isolation when he, after migration from village to uh, the city or uh, the city from, uh, from city to the village, uh, we must have to provide room ventilation and self-isolation in its uh, respective homes. And the last, this is the Indonesian innovation. As this is the robotic produced collaboration by Universitas Erlangga and Institute Technology of 10 November. And this is the autonomous UVC mobile robot to uh, disinfection room uh, produced by Telkom University and Institute Research of Science in Indonesia. And then this is the innovation from Universitas Indonesia produce a ventilator. And yes, this is the real-time PCR test kit produced by Biopharma Corporation and uh, Technology Application and Research Institute. Then this is the RIGA. This RIGA is rapid test for COVID-19 produced by Collaborative uh, Research Technology, uh, Ministry of Health, Universitas Erlangga, Universitas Gajah Mada, Universitas Pajajaran, and uh, Mataram Hepat Hepatika Mataram Corporation. And this is the Mobile Lab BSL2. This is, uh, is the first mobile lab to uh, analyze a sample from, uh, from suspected people. And this is the innovation uh, herbal production. Maybe this is uh, used for immunostimulant, uh, not for uh, treat COVID patient. So, I, uh, so I will uh, give you some information for your information that this herbal product just for uh, immunostimulant. 
and the last is uh, World Genome Sequencing for COVID Vaccine uh, by Aikman Institute. This is uh, for the for your information. Uh, the current research of COVID vaccine uh, still uh, become in clinical test. So uh, maybe all the people in Indonesia uh, still wait for the uh, official vaccine to the to be released. And yes, I think enough. Uh, I will invite all participants and all uh, attenders to fight and win against COVID-19. We believe that we will win against COVID-19 uh, as soon. Okay, thank you, Stensi. Thanks okay. for GSD uh, committee. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tohawi. Next, uh, we call upon Dr. Vital of uh, India to give his presentation. Dr. Vital, and please uh, take a look at the, the time when you, you talk, okay? Because you can keep Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, please start my video. Uh, you can start sharing your, your, your slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Uh, uh, good afternoon all by Japanese time and uh, good morning. Uh, 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 from our Indian time to all participants and I thank a lot uh, JST and uh, Sakura Science Plan and uh, Dr. Gui uh, who is organizer for this uh, uh, international conference for giving me opportunity to talk uh, in front of a uh, very learned audience. Thank you very much. Now I shall share my screen. Okay. So Ms. Saito has already shown your slide and uh, Dr. Vita, yeah. can you just uh, go on uh, to explain? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, I'm sorry that uh, uh, yeah, uh, there is some problem with a uh, little problem with connection. Uh, I thank Dr. Vita once again and uh, now we shall start with our presentation on new normals in India during COVID-19. Next, please. This is my uh, college view and different laboratories. Now, uh, this is uh, data regarding uh, the uh, COVID-19 cases uh, as on 27 July. Uh, total active cases in India uh, on 27 July were 4,85,114 uh, and cured cases were uh, 9,17,567 and uh, total deaths were 32,771. And if you see today's figure, uh, it is around uh, total cases are around 19,8254 and active cases are 5,86,244 and deaths are around 39,795 and death rate is uh, around 2%. Uh, if you see Indian uh, scenario, uh, uh, this is map showing uh, total number of, uh, sorry, the, um, the states having a uh, large number of cases. Maharashtra, uh, my state where I'm living, it is having maximum number of cases followed by Tamil Nadu, Delhi, then uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Gujarat, and Telangana states of the India. Next, please. And uh, yeah, the government of India uh, 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 took you know very you know swift actions as soon as the cases start you know rising, and uh, the lockdown, complete lockdown, was enforced on uh, three different uh, you know uh, in four different phases. Uh, first, it was uh, enforced uh, between 23rd March to 14th April. Then second, 15th April to 3rd May. Then third lockdown was. Uh, between 4th May to 17th May and the 4th was between 18th May to 31st May and then now uh, government uh, from 1st June onward started unlock uh, and it is not complete unlock though partial one uh, certain movements and uh, certain uh, uh, activities only are allowed in uh, during this particular uh, uh, unlock phase and now unlock one, unlock two, and unlock three um, uh, uh, is ongoing. And you can see, you know, uh, the deserted roads in the India during the COVID. Even, even most crowded places, one of the most crowded places in India, uh, in Mumbai, Taj, Hotel Taj, and uh, the in Gateway of India, you can see it is uh, deserted. 
then uh, uh, another major uh, you know uh, 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 the thing that government uh, uh, enforce was physical or social distancing and you can see uh, how people they are following you know social distancing or physical distancing during uh, uh, day to day operations here you can see people practice social distancing during uh, uh, the uh, their visit to fruit uh, market or uh, uh, vegetable market or even uh, when they visit malls and you can also see some pictures showing the uh, social distancing followed by people during uh, public transport uh, in buses and in metros also uh, yeah and again uh, the government has asked uh, uh, as uh, you know uh, put some uh, you know guidelines to prevent the spread of infection and uh, one of the most important is uh, uh, wearing masks and uh, sanitization uh, so you can see uh, people they they are uh, uh, they have started following such practices where uh, some other you know uh, 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 practices like using thermogun for checking temperature and uh, even observing patient for symptomatology at uh, public places and these are the things and actually uh, sanitization has become very very important since uh, 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 few one slide ahead mm -hmm. please move yeah yeah this is like these are the innovations uh, uh, by indian government and uh, uh, these uh, this is the uh, yeah robo robot robot developed by uh, kerala uh, some you know repository uh, huge repository repository of startups uh, and intellectual property has uh, you know geared up now and uh, we have innovations like this uh, asimo robotic quiz you know as, is being deployed at uh, hospitals and uh, even at uh, 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 malls to uh, dispense uh, san uh, to sanitize the people and uh, to perform other operations to deliver uh, certain other you know things in hospitals also next please next please yeah this is also one of the renovations wherein iit delhi has a startup and stylo which is a full body sanitizer tunnel is developed by this iit delhi and it has been installed in the vegetable and fruit market in delhi next please next please yeah this one is a very uh, you know like uh, uh, important app developed by government of uh, india uh, uh, and uh, uh, this has been now installed almost uh, you know after its launch 100 million people they installed this uh, app in 40 days period and now this this app is uh, like used for tracing the uh, covid 19 patients uh, around you so that you are you can safeguard yourself while going to those places next please next please next please yeah and uh, one more thing uh, you know very important change we are observing is paradigm shift in the education system now online education system is uh, being followed at many you know educational institutes though uh, like you know india is uh, uh, having uh, uh, major you know rural uh, areas where internet facilities still not there so some areas are having problem with online education system but most of the areas they have internet connectivity and now online education system has become most important thing next please next please next please yeah this is like one of the very very important recently we organized uh, uh, national uh, webinar series uh, and uh, we invited international speakers and this is dr v i thank him for uh, accepting our invitation and he was uh, one of the you know uh, guest speakers for delivering speech on uh, abortions in cattle when we organized a webinar where more than 500 600 people they participated worldwide including uh, our country next please next please yeah and uh, during this covid 19 uh, there is boom in the e uh, shopping and e commerce market you all know that india is one of the you know uh, the retail industry it, it is around 800 uh, billion but the share of uh, e commerce was only around 3.5% but during this covid 19 there is a heavy boom in the market uh, uh, and particularly people they are preferring e shopping now next please next please 
yeah work from home concept is uh, uh, also you know uh, uh, being nurtured during this covid 19 and many people whose uh, uh, jobs are you know can be you know uh, done from home they are working from home like it people they are working from home and many companies uh, whose job can be done online they are working you know online even we people uh, we are conducting lectures for students online during this uh, covid 19 period next please next please next please next please yeah like these are culture religious and cultural new normals india uh, is one of the most you know like uh, having a, a large number of you know religious religions and uh, there are different you know cultural diversities uh, so uh, now uh, people are not going into the uh, religious places and uh, Uh, they are praying from home so this is another new normal in the country which is not a very usual picture next 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 please next please yeah this is a, like uh, one of the another changes social and cultural shifts uh, usually marriages in india are very crowdy but uh, during this covid marriages are happening but with very less attendance probably as per the government guidelines people are uh, doing their marriages but with very few or limited people with all you know personal protectives on thank you next please next please next please next please yeah and uh, another change we are observing here in india during this covid 19 is shift in the responsibilities household responsibilities uh, related to uh, routine household work like uh, cooking and washing clothes and uh, um, uh, another you know household work you know, taking care of children and uh, teaching children this uh, type of you know work was mainly um, uh it was main responsibility of women but now during this covid there is little shift and uh, even men are also looking after the routine you know uh, responsibilities of household next please next please next okay, please uh, uh, dr vita we are slide, running sir. out of yeah, time sir. yeah one one more time yes, sir these are the uh, uh, some hurdles last slide uh, yeah the population as you know india is the second largest populous country in the world and uh, large population is one of the major hurdles in controlling the covid 19 along with these few you know another hurdles so with this i thank uh, you all for your patience listening uh, i thank dr v and i thank jst for inviting me thank you very much thank you thank you i i uh, end my talk here thank you very much i wish all uh, uh, health during this covid 19 please stay safe take care okay uh dr vita thank you for your presentation and uh, cannot see my face <laughs> so i would like to call upon uh, dr uh, laura uh to give your presentation we are actually running out of time now it's already 2 to uh, 45 okay laura uh, dr laura please share your your slide and unmute yourself dr laura can you unmute yourself unmute put on your mic hello okay. hello everyone all right um, share your slides yeah Okay. Yes, we can see your slide now. Okay. Dear yeah, participants sure. and our guests, our webinar. Let me tell about. Can you speak a little bit louder, please, Dr. Laura? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me tell uh, about um, new normal in Kazakhstan during this epidemic. Uh, uh, we uh, launched a quarantine on March 16. The government of Kazakhstan introduced a state of emergency. then quarantine in a number of large cities in order to spread stop spread of the virus the emergency was announced 3 days after the official application of for registration for the first cases of infection the regime was uh, in effect for almost 2 months until may 
quarantine has been introduced throughout the Republic. According to decree, the work of large retail outlets is limited for period of emergency. A ban is imposed to entertainment, sports, and other public events, including weddings. In addition, entry and exit across the state border is restricted. Uh, you can see in these pictures um, how we are um, trying to do the these works. And but. Uh, at, the, uh, at the end of the April, there were statements that the spread of the virus is under control and the spread of the virus will slow down. However, after opening borders in the cities, oh, sorry, in the cities, um, uh, stores, cafes, and people start holding events, and the situation goes worse again. The repeated quarantine measures against the spread of coronavirus were announced from July 16 until 17 of August. Uh, about educational system. Educational system of Kazakhstan uh, completely restructure the core activities so students continue to receive knowledge remotely. 190, 129 universities and the 7.5 thousand schools were transferred to online educationals. In this picture you can see how I do my uh, remote educational using by Platonus program. This is uh, screen what I did with my uh, lectures. And the one uh, um, uh, essential things that uh, we are doing during this, uh, during this period is uh, uh, people launched um, a drug card service for citizens. There are several functions on the site. The main ones are uh, people can choose. I need help and I can help. On a click, the date is filled in so special forms in which a person can detail their capabilities for providing support or if they need help. Helping each other become common. Many famous personalities create social groups and the networks and where people can exchange drugs that they do not, they do not need. And uh, um, in this period, we students of medical high uh, university institutes were attracted to fight against COVID-19 as a volunteer. Um, uh, since the moment when the state of emergency was introduced in Kazakhstan, volunteers held 6,217 actions, helped over 350,000 people who found themselves in difficult situation like uh, elderly people, socially vulnerable families, uh, they, uh, who really need help. Volunteers delivered them food, basic necessities, and uh, so on. About developments, in this period, our Institute of Intelligent System and Artificial Intelligence of Nazarbayev University has developed a stochastic epidemic simulator that predicts the dynamics of the spread of coronavirus in Kazakhstan. And uh, the other things in Kazakhstan, the Scientific Research Institute for Biological Safety Problems had extensive experience in developing vaccines against especially dangerous infections, which began this work in mid-March. In very short time, already on my nine scientists have developed the first vaccine. On my 15, uh, WHO registered it as a candidate vaccine for preclinical trials. On the same day, the vaccine was tested on a laboratory animals. Um, I think that's all about Kazakhstan in this situation. Okay, thank you thank very you much, uh, Dr. Laura Spatsiva. <laughs> <Harasho. Yes. laughs> okay, uh, next, uh, we are running short of time. I would just like to call upon uh, Dr. Adnan from uh, Pakistan. Uh, his university is very near to Lahore, and uh, we'll see what uh, he can tell us and hope that he can just make it brief. Dr. Adnan, please. Yes, thank you, Dr. Roy. And the Azabu University, JST, and Skura Science Club, 
for inviting me can you see my presentation uh yes move on current covid-19 situation in pakistan yes current well. situation okay. for a population of uh, as big as 212 million people initially the pandemic appeared to be quite a threatening situation but uh, due to an effective control and response strategy we have been able to cope up uh, with it and now the situation has become quite encouraging as you can see these figures just these figures just that now we have a case fatality rate of around 2.1% and the recovery rate of 88.9% which is quite encouraging uh, for now so this is a map of pakistan showing the reported corona virus cases as you can see uh, with the red dots we have reported cases throughout the pakistan and we have seven different territories within the country and sindh is a territory uh, which has reported most of the cases followed by punjab and then khyber pakhtunkhwa kpk and then the capital territory the islamabad bordered by balochistan gilgit baltistan and the kashmir so this graph shows the total number of reported cases per day in different dates in the middle of the june on the 14th june we had the maximum number of cases reported per day that was 6825 as of 3rd august we have dropped this figure to 331 this is a remarkable change so how come we have been able to flatten this curve this has been made possible by following this strategy the main points have been discussed here first one is creating public awareness it is always very rewarding to create public awareness so that the infection uh, transmission becomes checked second we have a smart lockdown strategy i will explain shortly then we have test trace and quarantine strategy we have just uh, tested the population on strategic and informed information and just quarantine the people that uh, appear to be uh, having at risk of uh, spreading the infection to other ones number fourth is the physical distancing Uh, we have made in sure uh, that the people follow all the rulings of physical distancing and a medical care care has been given only to those people uh, which were critically uh, diseased showing the signs of illness and not to all the people because uh, we have most of the people who are infected they got uh, just moderate to mild symptoms so for that people they are not hospitalized and they are just instructed to self quarantine themselves or self isolate themselves so use of the personal protective equipment including the mask the uh, gloves they have been made uh, they have been ensured by the public they have been implemented effectively and working from home where it is possible it has also been practiced so this is uh, something i was talking about the smart lockdown strategy how can we define it it is a localized need based intermittent lockdown at small scale limited to one street even or a block in a residential area uh, this is a strategy which is quite different from many other countries which have practiced uh, a complete lockdown pakistan has always avoided the complete lockdown why because we have to cope up with the economy you see if we do nothing then it will be a favorable situation for economic boost but uh, the outbreak will remain unchecked but if we do uh, for other countries like we do continuous lockdown then we will uh, we can expect an economic you can say collapse so it is something in the middle of the two so to tackle the outbreak by keeping up with the economy so during this lockdown some of the facilities have been remained open where standard operating procedures formulated by the government have been implemented and followed by people 
all of the academic institutes, including schools, universities, colleges, they have been closed until the 15th, 15th of September 2020. So during this period, we have been uh, teaching through online means and all the public places, they have been partly or completely closed. They include hotels, marriage halls, parks and religious places. And these are the same parts I have discussed earlier. Let's move on. So public awareness through print and electronic media. We have provided clear cut information to the public. So uh, you can see the things they must do or they should do and the things they should avoid. They have been clearly instructed and people are just abiding by. So online teaching at my university, University of Veterinary and Animal Sciences. We have adopted the online teaching strategy since March 2020. For that purpose, uh, for conducting effective teaching, we have, uh, we have been using a specialized software called CTS, Computerized Teaching System. This is a window where I have uploaded the lectures and disappears to my students. So these are the record, uh, lecture records that I have displayed over here. Some of the examinations have also been conducted through online means. So this slide shows the impact of the outbreak on a common person's life. So what are these? Let's say the social greeting norms. Before the outbreak, Handshaking and hugging was quite common among uh, the people. And now the people have adopted the strategy of distant greetings, as you can see, by using the mask and staying away from each other. So this is the inside scenario of a shopping center. You can see earlier, uh, these places were very crowded. And nowadays, they look quite empty and they have the food points placed at least six feet apart all over the floor. So this is the same thing that have already been discussed by Dr. Vital as well. In the mosque, there used to be uh, many people at one time praying and there uh, would be many carpets, rugs. So how we have been able to manage this? We have removed all the carpets, exposed the floors and limited the number of people praying at one time and all these people are staying apart at least as six feet and they're using the mandatory use of masks so in all these facilities at entrance we have uh, a system of monitoring your body temperature and a mandatory placement of a sign that you cannot enter without the mask in this facility this has also been practiced in all the you know, shops even in the small streets as well. This is a walk through disinfectant gates uh, that has been installed at the entrance of some places where there is uh, more public gathering, as you can see how it works. It showers some antiseptic on the people. So it is an effective thing. So there is a concept of telemedicine that has got popularity uh, in both medical and veterinary practice. Purpose is to limit the public gathering and decrease unnecessary pressure on the hospitals. So only those people which uh, have mild symptoms or other diseases which can otherwise be avoided to visit hospitals and they only need a physician's consultation. So they are using this telemedicine. So this strategy has been helpful to reduce pressure on hospitals. Online shopping and e-commerce trend, it has got popularity. So physical distancing has led to boosted trend of online shopping. Although it was practiced before the uh, COVID-19, but during COVID-19, I must say, it is a positive phase of this pandemic that more people are involved in this business and new entrepreneurs are entering the market and we have many online businesses involved. It is in turn expanding our economy. The Raz.pk, it is one of the 
you can say key players in the online shopping it has re already reported that their sales have become doubled during this three months period so the state bank of pakistan has also indicated that the digital payments will increase country's uh, economy at the rate of seven percent so this is a positive impact resource management for medical emergency uh, this is just a management strategy as you can see in the hospitals uh, we did were not even prepared for that much number of cases and that much number of ventilators so pandemic put a huge pressure that pushed us to make some uh, management practices as you can see in this figure this is a facility which has been turned into a field hospital earlier it was an expo center in lahore where exhibitions industrial exhibitions were carried out but nowadays it has been turned into a field hospitals many such other facilities and local schools have been turned into such a facilities and here in this diagram you can see it is a state of the art full fledged uh, dedicated hospital for covid-19 patients it has also been constructed and this is a facility uh, which manufactures ventilators because we were facing a shortage of ventilators as rest of the world so we kick started indigenous production of ventilators so now we are meeting the need of ventilators uh, apart from the ventilators we are also manufacturing some of the rt pcr testing kits and the personal protective equipments so that's all from my side i am grateful to you for your kind attention thank you very much okay uh, thank you very much dr adnan and then I think we'll move on. <laughs> Maybe we might have to extend this webinar for uh, about half an hour. Next, uh, Dr. Sirinun uh, okay. of uh, yes. Chulalongkorn um, University. Can you please uh, move on and give your, give your presentation? Okay, thank you. I will share my slide. Okay, can you see my slide? Yes, we can see your slide. Thailand situation, COVID-19. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. Okay, start my video. Okay, please. Uh, hello everyone, I am Siri Nan Pismai from Chualongkorn University, Bangkok, Thailand. As you all know today, I'm going to talk to you about the COVID-19 situation in Thailand, especially the new normal living of Thai people. Okay, I'm going to start with the Thailand situation. There is a data since we have COVID-19 endemic in my country until the end of July 2020. We have uh, about 3,000 uh, confirmed cases and new cases per day are about not more than 10 cases. And right now we have no cases that infected in Thailand for two months because our new cases were the people who come from abroad and they stay in quarantine places. Our people uh, who come from abroad must stay in the state quarantine for 14 days and they must be checked for the COVID-19 infection during the quarantine period as well. And you can see the chart of Thailand situation. And the center that management of COVID-19 endemic in Thailand is working under the Thai government. In Thailand, we developed the mobile application named uh, Thai Shana to collect the data of people that visit the public places. The advantages are tracking the places that have a COVID-19 patient to announce the people that, uh, who may contact with the infected people then we can observe our health status by the mobile application. So from uh, this mobile application and working of a uh, Thai government, it's become to the new normal behavior. Before we go into the public places, we have to scan QR code uh, in 
fun. We also uh, scan the QR code for checking in that place via mobile phone application that I mentioned. Then we are check my body temperature to all that people who has high fever sign. And this picture show the new style of uh, barbers in Thailand. They usually wear gloves, face masks, and face shield for the restaurant or customer who has not come together must be separate properly. And for uh, Thai education, all level of education, including primary school, high school, and university, have been started the semester with the new normal living. We also have the electronic tool, and you can see the electronic tool at school and at house. Uh, we also have the electronic tool to learn by themselves, and we separate the student into subgroup to avoid the uh, to avoid the crowded situation at school or university. Moreover, our students must wear face masks during their leave at school as well. And you can see the picture of the high school, kindergarten, and primary school. Uh, for my university, Chualongkorn University, we have started the new semester with the guideline of the opening classes. We have key preventive measures to fend off the spread of COVID-19 in our university. And you can see this chart. For example, wear a face mask, set up hand washing facilities, limit number of activity and participants, and monitor entry on campus via mobile application as well. Moreover, we have like a supplementary measure to uh, prevent the spreading of virus. For example, develop an innovation and technology to support e-learning. Hopefully, we developed uh, the COVID-19 vaccine project from Faculty of Medicine. And uh, right now, this step is, is success. Right now, we are in the step of producing doses of vaccine to human child. And we hope that our vaccine will be used to protect our people from COVID-19 situation. Okay, thank you very much. That's all about briefly new normal living in Thailand. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sirinung. And uh, it's nice to learn that uh, many countries like Kazakhstan or Thailand are producing your own vaccine. You see. Okay, uh, next, Kok Kung Kao. Next, uh, we'll call upon Dr. Liu uh, to give his presentation uh, from China in uh, Beijing. And we understand that you are having a lot of uh, rain and storms because of this uh, typhoon. Now, okay, uh, please give your presentation, share your slides. Hi, is my uh, PowerPoint on the screen? It's okay? Yes, uh, we can see our day to day since June in China. In, in China. Okay, thank you. Good, af good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the next speaker, Shen Yu, from China, from Beijing. So my uh, title of the presentation is Our Day to Day Since June in China. In China, COVID-19 COVID seems under control in most regions. However, you see, in, in some regions, they have, we have re-emergence. For example, in Beijing, since June 11th, we, uh, to now, we have about 200 cases reported in Beijing. So, so here I just show only from my view uh, to you some, some new nets of, of, of us in China or in Beijing. Here, I just, the slide shows my family. I stayed at home in June with my family or work in, on the campus and also do some uh, running. In July, I went out to the 
park to have some picnic with my kids and my families. Uh, for our university, uh, since June, we, our university re restricted the return of the graduate students. All the staff, you see, all staff can move in or move out from this uh, this gate with facing recognizing. Here, here is me. And uh, all students, they cannot get out, but they can do the experiments in the laboratory. And uh, we have we had our uh, PhD or master defenses just online. And uh, after that, they graduated and then leave, left the school, left the, our campus by a must check. You see here, this this is my a master student. <laughs> For our city, uh, daily release of the COVID-19 information was released by the officers. And uh, in June, we have we had a uh, uh, screening for all uh, people in the city. For our campus, all the staff and students, we had uh, this screening just in half a day, you see here. That's on June 27th. Uh, totally, we have uh, 5,821 people. All of us were negative for the virus. That's great news. And if we uh, wanted to uh, go out to a park or to a neighbor city, we needed to use uh, an NPP named Jian Kangbao. That's in China. In China this in Chinese. Uh, we needed to use this one. Okay, this in our city. However, in, in China, you see here, in, especially in South China, we, the knife is threatening by the flood. Yes, here is my hometown, yeah. So, in our world, we are struggling, struggling to get through the hard time of 2020 in China. And uh, that's all my presentation, just a very short to save the time. And at last, I would thank you all and especially to Professor Oi. Thank you. I finished. Oh, uh, Dr. Liu, uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, nice presentation. And uh, we always uh, think about the people's first, okay, in, in all the, 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 the countries. And uh, I think, uh, well, we have, we are over by more than uh, 15 minutes uh, when we are supposed to end this uh, webinar. And uh, to make an ending, I would just like to show you my, uh, the, the, the final slide about Japan. So what do I do? I do this uh, Gamen Kyoyu, is it? Uh, full screen. Uh, this is uh, one of the final slides that I just want to tell you about the situation in Japan. As I've told you earlier that we are having a lot of these uh, patients, new patients uh, by nearly 1,000 every day, these few days. But the mortality rate is not too high as compared to other countries. So in Japan, we do not really have a very severe lockdown. It's just uh, what we call emergency declaration. That means we call people not to uh, go out. But people still can go out. They won't be fined or they won't be arrested. So in Japan, you just, uh, we say that avoid the tree dens, okay? So avoid the closed or poorly ventilate, ventilated space or room. Avoid congregating with other people and avoid close contact with other people. So uh, in Japan, uh, especially in spring, even before this COVID, uh, many people wear masks in spring because they have allergy to this pollen, the pine tree pollens especially. So uh, during spring, you find a lot of people wearing masks. So it is not uh, something that is very abnormal wearing masks in Japan. The, the, the Japanese have been wearing masks uh, 
many decades ago. Okay, so here I would just like to uh, give you an example of uh, the drugs being approved by the Japanese government for the treatment of COVID-19. We know that this COVID-19 uh, kills uh, due to this, uh, what we call cytokine storm. So two drugs, one is Remdesivir, which is being used for Ebola or SARS or MERS. Okay, uh, it has been approved for use uh, for treatment okay, of uh, severe uh, acute patients. And dexamethasone, used as a immunosuppressor to reduce the cytokine storm, so the patient will not die. And well, uh, actually, uh, my friends in the hospital here, he has, he thinks that clarithromycin, which is an antibiotic used for interstitial pneumonia, might uh, help in the therapy of COVID-19. So he suggested that it might be a good add-on drug. That means you still use this drug, but you can just add on uh, this drug because this clarithromycin see, is able to suppress the interleukin-6, uh, which is one of the main reasons why we get this cytokine storm. And the clinical trial for this clarithromycin started in Greece in May 2020. So masks were sold out previously, but now we got this uh, mask back on the shelves and plastic sheets were used to separate buyers and vendors and then of course, increased wearing of public mask. So I guess uh, this is all we can say. So what, what do I do? So I just go back to this. Uh, and Zoom, so, so, so how do I go, go back to Zoom? Wait, let me see. Uh, all right. Mm. Now I cannot see anybody's, <laughs> only the Zoom. Oh, okay. So, well, uh, with this uh, presentation, uh, we would like just like to close this uh, webinar. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everybody who have come in to, to join these talks. Uh, there are more than 100 over people, and especially all the speakers. Actually, we would like to uh, invite more speakers from different countries, you see. As uh, Dr. Kuroki has said, uh, we have uh, actually uh, authors from more than 20, uh, 24 countries who have written about the COVID situation in the country, which was being uh, uploaded in the website of Sakura Science Plan. Okay, so, well, I guess uh, like, uh, what Kra has says, uh, all the countries are doing all the impressive job of uh, creating efforts to control this virus. And this virus will be with us for a long, long time to come. So in Japan, the, the next problem is that, can we have the Olympic next year? There's a very big question now, you see. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Kuroki and all the speakers, as well as uh, those of you who came in and uh, joined these webinars and then you have written in the chat and then of course we will uh, take down all the chats and then see if we have the time we will uh, try to reply to your questions. Okay, so I guess uh, that's it for today. Okay, Kokun Kaps, Pap Sivas, Terima kasih. Thank you very much, Wee Sensei. So we can withdraw now. Thank you very much, Professor Uwe. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Uwe. Thank you very much, Professor Oi and all organizers. And I congratulate all of you for successfully conducting this webinar. Shukran, shukran. Thank you very much, Dr. Ui and uh, uh, the team of uh, JST and Sakura Science Club for a very nice opportunity. I thank you from our university and myself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ai Sensei, all the Sakura Science staff, and also for uh, Japan Science and Technology. 
uh, see you for the next time in the next webinar and terima kasih stay safe stay safe everyone and thank you okay uh, thank you uh, dr tohawi is dr dandy and adiana there too yes okay. i think okay. dr okay. dandy is okay. already there okay kirim selamat na okay bye bye